shall I say, ahoy, my most amazing artists, because once again, we are in Pirate Week, and today we're going to be creating a pirate ship collage using things that you guys have in your home. But before we do, I wanna give a big old shout out to Dixon Ticonderoga. I'm using their supplies to create my work of art and I love using their supplies because they're my favorite. They're the best things that I could find to use to make piratey masterpieces with you. Before we get rolling though, let's go ahead and say our art class catchphrase. I make messes. I make mistakes, but deep inside, I got what it takes. I am an artist. And today I thought it would be great to have Ali Gator come back and join us and tell us exactly what supplies we're going to need for today's piratey collage. Here to share with us the supplies we'll be using today is our buddy, Ali Gator. Ali, do you want to tell us what supplies we're using today? Sure, but before I do, I thought I'd share a little joke with you. Oh, awesome, yes, let's hear it. What's a pirate's favorite kind of food? Oh, geez, I don't know, lasagna? Really? I, don't, I love lasagna. Seriously, lasagna is just spaghetti cake. Oh my gosh, you're right. No, a pirate's favorite food is barbecue. Oh, that, that was good. That was, that was pretty good. Okay, I get it, because the R and all that. Yes, exactly. All right, why don't you tell us the supplies we'll be using today, because it's stuff that we already have, but there's quite a few things on our list. Uh, sure. So a cereal box or any kind of piece of cardboard, toilet paper tube, crayons, markers maybe, glue, scissors. Is that it? That's it. That's all you'll need to make your piratey masterpiece. Awesome. Thank you so much and I'll talk to you later. Bye guys. Have fun. All right friends, today we're going to be creating a collage a collage is a French word that means paper and glue, which is exactly what we're going to be using today. We'll be using paper and glue, putting them together with a bunch of other art supplies like markers and crayons and colored pencils to create a seascape scene of a pirate ship. It's called a seascape because most of the picture is a picture of the sea. If most of this picture were a picture of the land, it would be called a landscape. If most of this picture were a picture of a city, it would be called a, you guessed it, cityscape. To begin our seascape, we're going to start with a cereal box or maybe a piece of white paper. You could even use an old folder, which is exactly what I'm using. So go ahead. Cut out the shape that you need while I move the sky out of the way. For my sky and my seascape, I used crayons. You could use crayons, you could use markers, you could use whatever supplies that you happen to have. That just happens to be the supply that I'm choosing. While I'm working on my sky, before I do, I need to think about what kind of sky do I wanna have? Is it a beautiful sunny day, perfect for sailing? Is it a sunset or a sunrise sky? Ooh, maybe it's a stormy sky with lightning strikes and thunder. Totally up to you. Once you figure out what kind of sky you want, go ahead and pick out the colors that you'll be using. I'm using crayons for my sky. You can use whatever art supply that you have on hand. I'll be doing a sunrise or maybe a sunset sky. I've got my colors picked out, but now I need to think about what order do I want my colors to go in. I think I want my colors to go from dark, or maybe the cool colors, to light gradually. That's called a gradation. Those are the colors I think I'm going to be using. Now I can work on my sky. My sky, I'm going to be coloring it with a horizontal line, a line that kind of goes back and forth as I color and I want to make a nice dark value, so I'm pressing pretty hard with my crayon. You don't have to make a dark value, you don't have to press as hard as I am, but I just really want it to be bold and beautiful and bright. 
You'll also notice that I'm leaving some gaps in my sky. I'm not filling it all the way in completely. I'm going back and forth, but leaving some spaces. The reason I'm leaving some spaces is because I'm going to now overlap those colors and fill in some of those spaces with the other colors that I laid out. So think about how you could make your sky, what colors you're going to use as I work on finishing up my sky. Ooh, so how are you going to color your sky? So many different choices. One thing you could do right now is go outside and just look at the sky. What colors do you see? It's pretty rainy right here now, so I see a lot of gray, some blue, clouds. Ooh, there's even rain coming down. Could you show that happening in your sky? So many different possibilities. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Now that my sky is complete, and you'll notice I did not color all the way down to the bottom. I'm just going to move it out of the way. And now I'm using a blank piece of paper. With my blank piece of paper, I want you to turn it so that it's going vertically. And I want you to fold it in half, going from one long side over to the other long side. Have one hand hold it down and smooth out the bump. Open your paper one more time and you have a crease down the middle of your paper. Go ahead and use your scissors to cut on this crease. One half of this paper will be used for the water. The other half we will use for the sails for our pirate ship. I'm doing the water first, so I'll move that out of the way. Now I'm going to work on some texture to create on this paper for my waves. I could do this a couple of ways. I could use crayons to draw different kinds of lines for the texture. I could use markers, or I could use a combination of both, which is mixed media. If you decide to use markers, you could then take a little bit of water on a paintbrush paint over your marker lines and turn your marker lines into paint. I don't wanna do that because I don't wanna wait for my paper to dry. I'm feeling a little impatient and I wanna get started. So I'm just going to be using crayons and markers with no water. All right, when I use my crayons, I'm gonna do a couple of things. The first thing I think I'll do is a rubbing. So I'm holding my crayon on its side. If you have a texture to put underneath your paper, even better. Okay, now that I've got this really cool, beautiful color, I'm gonna take some other colors that remind me of water, maybe combine all those colors and hold them all together at once. Let's see if I can do it. Holding all three colors together at once. Let's see what kind of lines, maybe some wavy, watery lines that I can make. That looks pretty cool. Maybe swirly lines, any kind of lines is up to you. If you also wanna go ahead and draw on top of that with your marker, you can. But you know what? I really like this paper the way that it is. Just gonna add a little bit more and now it's all finished. Now if I just place this paper here, it doesn't really create the illusion of water. It's too smooth. I want this to have waves crashing, coming and going. So to do that, you have a choice. You could use your scissors to cut your paper so that it has a wavy line that looks like water. Or my favorite trick, you could tear the paper, which will give it a really great texture like waves. So to do that, I'm going to start at the top of my paper on the short end, and I'm making a small little tear at the top like this. Cool. Now I'm going to tear this paper, but not in a straight line. I want to tear it so it looks kind of wavy, like waves in a water. So to do that, my extra hand is going to hold the paper down. This hand is going to bring the paper one way, then back the other way. I'll show you. Go ahead, hand, go ahead and pull that paper. Okay, must leave it, so I'm gonna pull it this way. Whoa, you're getting too close. Time to go back this way. All right, go in this way. Wow, you're getting too close. Go back the other way. So you're just tearing slowly back and forth to kind of create a wave line, but even better to get this really cool texture. Now I have to decide where do I want these waves to go? So to glue them in place, I think I want this one in the front. That's called the foreground. I think I want this one in the 
middle, that's called the middle ground, then maybe my sky is in the back or the background. So I think what I'm going to do next is start to glue. When I glue my papers in place, I'm only using a dot, not a lot. And notice where I put my glue. I only put it along the straight line. So now I'm going to make the two straight lines match up. Whoop. And my paper's a little bit longer than my background, and that's okay. When my paper dries, I'll just use my scissors to give it a little bit of a trim. My hands are massaging the glue to get it to have enough grab time so it really stays in place. Now I need to glue this paper that's in the middle or background. But I don't want any of this cardboard back here to show. So when I glue it down, I can't glue it like this. I can't glue it like that. I'm gonna glue it so that it's just like that. And I'm doing the same thing with my glue. Just a dot, not a lot, only on my straight edge. The reason I'm only wanting it on my straight edge is because I like my waves to look like they're popping out. I also wanna be able to have a place to put my boat or my pirate ship in. Okay, I think I'm ready to work on my pirate ship. Now for your pirate ship, you could use any old piece of cardboard, but if you're like me, you probably have some toilet paper tubes laying around. So your first step will be to take your toilet paper tube and cut it in a straight line just like that to kind of open it up a bit. And now you have this really nice piece of cardboard to make your ship. The only problem is it wants to keep bouncing back into place. So to get it to lie kind of flat, you need to bend it a little in the opposite direction give it a little massage. It's gonna bend the cardboard up a little bit, but you know what? That's perfect, because now it'll look lumpy and bumpy and kind of old like a pirate ship. I'm going to use a brown crayon, I'm using a black crayon to give this paper a bit of a rubbing, to give it some more texture. Texture is one of our elements of art that we love to incorporate into our masterpieces. I'm gonna maybe even include some lines, 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 lines to show that this ship is made out of wood. Maybe I can even use my black too. Now to create this into a ship. There's all sorts of different ways that you can cut this tube into a ship shape. But for me, I'm gonna keep it very simple. I'm going to make a big curve like a letter U. This big curve like a letter U stretches from one side, touches the bottom of my cardboard, goes to the other side. Once you've got that drawn, go ahead and cut it out. All right, now I have my pirate ship. I just now need to think about where am I going to put it? Let's see, it could go right here behind these waves. It could be floating back here. Maybe, ooh, I kind of like the idea of it riding on a wave like this. That looks pretty cool. Let's see, can I scoot it over a little bit? There we go, I like the way that looks. So decide where would be a good place for, oh, but that looks pretty good too. Before, once you have it figured out, you're going to be putting glue around the edges. Now the only problem is, is that this cardboard doesn't necessarily want to stick. So you will have to hold it in place for a little while, give that glue enough grab time. If you want to, you could always just put something heavy on top of it like that to let the glue grab, or you could have your other hand just kind of sit and hold it in place. While you're doing that, we can work on the masts for your pirate ship. So starting in, in the middle of this line, I'm going to make a tall line that goes all the way up almost to the top of my paper. That's one of my masts where my sail will go. Maybe I can even put a little circle right there to show where it ends. I could put another mast here. Maybe it's not quite as tall. A good idea might be to look at some ships online and see what they look like. Look at some different pirate ships. And maybe I'll have a diagonal line coming away like that. That can be where my pirate's flag is. Okay, let's see if my cardboard is now glued down. 
Oh, pretty good. Okay, and if any parts come up, I can just hold it down a little longer. Do you remember how we cut this paper in half? Let's use that now to make the sails of our ship. I'm just gonna cut out a rectangle and maybe trim it a little bit. And you could do this the easy way where you just take it and glue it flat. You could just glue a couple of flat pieces of paper on there for your pirate ship. You could even decorate these with your pirate emblem or designs or whatever you want before you glue it. But I want my sails to look like they're blowing in the breeze to really pop out. So to do that, I'm taking my paper and I'm going to fold a little foot right there. Boop, boop, boop. Fold the little foot right there, tooka, 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 and bend the paper so it starts to sit up a little bit. On the bottom of those feet that I just made, I'll add a little bit of glue. Let's see if I can get one right there. Looks like a good place. And now I really have to hold it. Once again, giving that glue its grab time. If I don't, it'll just pop right back off. So I'm gonna give it the massage, massage, massage. And I think I'll add some more sails that same way. Something to think about. Instead of just drawing with a crayon your masts like I did, you could always use a straw or even roll a piece of paper to add more dimension to your artwork. Again, to make those sails, all you have to do is use a rectangle piece of paper that you fold one end. Oops, my glue came undone. You fold the other end, bend the paper, and add a little bit of glue. Now you saw that mine didn't stick the first time. The reason that it came undone was not because I needed more glue. I didn't give it enough grab time. That's the key. So if you have any trouble with those sails or even your pirate ship, just Hold it in place a little bit longer and give that glue enough grab time. Now, to really complete your pirate ship, you need to have a skull and crossbones flag. So to do that, I'm going to cut out a rectangular piece of paper. Let's see, this piece looks pretty good right about here. You could draw with a pencil, crayon, or markers for this next step. Once you've got your paper cut out, which I appear to be having a problem with, then you're going to draw your skull and crossbones. So I'm gonna actually draw it a little bit bigger on this paper so you can see it better. It starts with an almost circle shape. And then the bottom of a square, a couple of circles that you color in for the eye sockets, horizontal line, some verticals, and maybe a little triangle for a nose. Easy. You could draw the crossbones with some rectangular shapes behind or in the background. Now this is probably a little bit too big for my pirate ship. So I did make one that was a little bit smaller. That way it's more in what's called proportion. To finish it off, you'll notice I colored the background with crayon. I cut a curved line right there and then a ziggity zaggity line at the bottom to make the flag look kind of old and tattered. Speaking of, I'm gonna bend it a little bit to make it look even more old. And then on the back, right here, boop, and there, boop, a little dot of glue, putting it right there on my pirate ship. <gasps> Yay, I think my masterpiece is complete. All that's left that I have to do is sign it. I cannot wait to see what your pirate ships end up looking like. Friends, if you want to follow along on more piratey adventures or any art making adventures, make sure you give this video a big old thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. See you later.